Okay, here on the bench we have some uh, Turner microphones. Uh, actually, they are both Turner, but this one doesn't say Turner. This one, as you can see, says Lafayette Range Boost. But uh, I think it's kind of obvious to tell, just by looking at these two microphones side by side, who made it. Turner did. <laughs> now, from the top side you might think, oh, well, this is the Super Sidekick, which it says, and that must be what this is. No, it's not. You can see for starters, the Super Sidekick has the chrome head, this has a black head. Now, actually, the top side, yeah, pretty much exactly the same, other than the, you know, color difference, or one's chrome, one's not. On the underside, there's actually a very large difference. Uh, now, this microphone would have been earlier than this mic. This microphone, for all intents and purposes, is a uh, Turner Plus 3 microphone. Um, now this microphone, in my opinion, is probably the best mic, one of the best microphones ever made. I know there's a lot of people that love their D104s, um, I'm a Turner guy, I think they have a better, a better flat frequency response, they just sound better, you know, out of the box with no modifications. Yeah, there's all kinds of modifications you can do to a D104 to make them sound good, but this microphone, you take it out of the box, stick the right mic plug on the end, shove a battery in the underside, you're in business. Fantastic sounding audio and no modifications needed. Now one of the things that I think made this one so much better than this one, this has speech compression. Because like I say, this is just a, a rebranded plus three basically. Where this one, the later version, did not have the speech compression. Now, kind of seems odd to me because they marketed the Super Sidekick as the sideband microphone. Honestly, I think this one works better. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I'd take even the Super Sidekick over almost any other microphone any day of the week. But if you gave me a choice of this one or this one, I'd probably pick this one because I think this one is just the best, one of the best mics there are. Short of going with the, uh, you know, a more studio mic or some external processing, this one's probably the best. So on the underside, so let me get them flipped around here. Now, one thing you'll notice, one has and one doesn't, one of the first things is this one has a switch, this one does not. And if you look at the base plates, it's kind of obvious which one goes to which. This one has the hole for the switch, while this one, so that goes to that, got to glue that back on, this is missing the hole for the switch. So... What that switch is, actually it tells you right there, electronic eh, electronic or relay switching. Now I just covered that recently in a video, um, what that means and whatnot. And I had said about some microphones have that. So since I have these on the bench and torn apart, now would actually be a good time to cover exactly what does that entail electronically inside a microphone. It's very simple. If you remember from that video, I said that electronic and relay switching, the difference is in electronic switching, uh, one of your switch contacts here, so you know you have a two, granted they're all facing that direction, it'd be hard to put my hands that way, but you have two actual contacts, and then you have a center pin here, okay, and it can contact either this one or this one, depending if the push to talk button is switched. In electronic switching, that center would be also attached to your ground or the shield wire. But in uh, relay switching, that wire, that's just a separate wire that goes out to the microphone cord. And I can show that here on the schematic. Okay. So if you look, they had the shield right here. Okay, this show the shield comes down to ground, or the body of the microphone itself. And this is for electronic switching, and then we have relay switching here, and you can see the same thing. They have the shield going to the body, or the, you know, the housing of the microphone. But here's the difference. So here's your actual push-to-talk switch for the actual switching inside your radio. Okay, so you can see right here, we have a you know, red wire comes in, and a black wire on one side. And notice how that center pin, or that the part that actually moves up and down there, that's attached to ground. So it's attached to the shield which is what most of your modern radios need. They need to see a ground to either be switched into receive or into transmit. In relay switching, 
you're switching an actual relay and you either need to provide a ground or a voltage source to to the radio to one of those pins in the mic mic plug on the front of your radio to actually actuate the re the switching relay inside your radio so we can see that center pin here red red wire is the same but you can see that center pin is no longer attached like up here it's not attached to ground it just goes straight to the black wire and straight into the mic cord and what that does in that that allows you then to hook the black wire up to one pin on the plug and the other wire on the other pin so it can close the contacts which would either like I say supply ground or power but that's dictated by what's the on the radio so that's that's the main difference there now on the inside of these microphones the difference is like I say this one's basically may say Lafayette but it's basically a plus three it has the same amplifier board that was in the Turner plus three microphone and then this is the super sidekick board so this is the earlier one in my opinion the better one so you can see there's actually uh, actually it's three regular transistors here and this is actually a FET and you can see what's on the board here now one one thing you'll notice is there's pot right there there's one control and if you come over to this one there's actually two controls there's the one up top and the one on the bottom so but uh, like I say this one in my opinion is much better um, I, I just think it sounds better that compression circuit actually works really well it helps to prevent over modulation um, that compression circuit uh, I really like it like I say this one works great too but you can see obviously two completely different circuit boards and you'll even notice there's only one transistor on this board and then we have this actually that's a little tiny four pin <laughs> IC right there it's a Motorola it's a fourth what is it? M I think it's like MFC 4000B. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. MFC 4000B. But, uh, yeah, so you can see there's actually a lot less components. They did away with some of the stuff. Like I say, there's also no compression in here, so they didn't need the, the components for that. So, you know, if you have one of these, either one, they're both fantastic microphones. I'd, I would take either one of these over pretty much any other microphone. Um... This one being my preferred one, you know, the Plus 3 or this Lafayette just happens to be, you know, branded as a Lafayette. Um, both great mics. Now, if you were so inclined, if you wanted to use this on an old radio, or you wanted to, the, the choice of maybe running this on a old tube radio or a more modern radio, it doesn't have the switch. Actually, it wouldn't be that hard to install it. All you need to do is get one of those switches and hook it up in in circuit you can just look at the schematic and see where how they're wired in it's actually very it would be fairly simple to install that now one thing i did notice on this mic someone's had this apart a lot of the screw colors didn't match on the inside there's something missing right there <laughs> it's kind of important um well i wouldn't say important but if as long as you're not violent with your microphone cord the strap's missing if you notice on this one let me move this over a little bit you know, it has a metal strap actually clamps down so you can't rip the cord out of the back of the mic. For some strange reason, someone has removed that. I don't know why you would take that off. So, yeah, we need to we need to put a new strap on there so the mic cord can't get ripped out of the back side of the microphone housing. Um, and one other thing, uh, anytime you work on a microphone, old microphones, you got to remember these things are from the... Uh, this one would probably be early 70s. Um, I think the plus three came out what seventy one or seventy two, so you know, it's as old as I am, um, and this one's a you know was a little bit newer, but it's still old. Um, common problem I see quite a, a lot on microphones. People send me their microphones that don't work, and this this holds true for a statics as well. If you have an amplified base a static microphone, um, if you stick a new battery in it, you've checked the wiring you new for absolute sure it's wired right you've got the right plug on the end the wiring hasn't been tinkered with on the inside and it just won't work two common problems with microphones microphone cartridges they do go bad especially depending on how they were stored you know in temperatures and what type of humidity they were the microphones have been stored in over the decades but a very common problem i find on microphones bad electrolytic capacitors people seem to forget um yeah, I mean, I, I recap radios all the time. And people send me their radio to recap them. Even if there's nothing wrong with it, if it's working fine, they want the electrolytic capacitors replaced because they know they're going to fail. But they always seem to forget 
the amplifier board in their microphones also have electrolytic capacitors. So you can see this one's got three on it, and this one has five. Back over into view a little bit here. Actually, this one actually this one has even more than five. This actually has seven. Honestly, it has, but it has five aluminum electrolytics and two tantalums. Now, normally I always replace tantalums, um, but only in radios. The reason I usually change those in radios is, um, my opinion, the majority of tantalums uh, used in radios, they have them so close to the actual operating voltage, what that cap's going to be running at, they stand a good chance of fa failing. And when a tantalum fails, it fails in a dead short. Um, in these microphones, you really don't need to replace those tantalums. These aren't these aren't running, you know, red line right, right at the close to op, their maximum operating voltage. But these aluminum electrolytics, you definitely want to change those um, in both of these mics. Like I say, it doesn't matter if it's an old plus two, a JM plus two, plus three super side kick. It doesn't matter. It could be one of the custom specials. Those gold, you know, the Turner gold microphones. An a static mic, it can be, doesn't matter who made it, a realistic microphone. Hell, it could be an old Kenwood microphone. <laughs> Anything that's a power mic. Like I say, people seem to forget they have electrolytic capacitors in them, and they go bad. So, um, you know, if you do work on your own stuff, um, and you feel, you know, confident enough to change electrolytic capacitors, if you ever get a get a base mic, or even a hand mic, because the hand, hand power mics also have electrolytics, but if you get one and it doesn't work, that's one of the first things to check out. Like I say, after you make sure the wiring, because that's going to be your most common problem, is why there, somebody has screwed up either the wiring or in the plug, or worse yet, they've gotten in here and completely rewired these switches, and they have that all screwed up. So, But once you've confirmed, that's fine. Try the caps. And don't use cheap junk capacitors. Try to use halfway decent brand capacitors here because you got to remember, this is the audio. This is the first thing the audio that comes out of that microphone cartridge. The first thing it's going to see is this amplifier board. So you don't want to be inducing any, you know, pardon my French, but crap quality parts into a circuit um, in the beginning stages of the audio where it's just going to keep getting amplified more and more and more as it goes through the radio. So just try and use some good, good caps there. But there's just a preview of... Uh, some Turner mics. Actually, like I say, one's a Turner, one's just a rebranded Turner. It was rebranded for Lafayette. But the uh, customer sent these in just to have them checked over, have new mic plugs installed on them, and wired properly, because they're apparently both screwed up right now. But uh, other than that, there you go. There's some, some of my favorite mics, the Turners. Okay, I was starting and getting ready to put a new microphone plug end on this cord, and I thought, you know... I literally get so many questions about that relay electronic switching. I mean, maybe seem seeming to get repetitive here to some people, but it, it seems to be so misunderstood. So a Turner microphone. We're just gonna just want to demonstrate what what I was talking about on the inside. What that means at the outside of your mic, actually at the cord. So we have four wires. The white is the audio. I've already stripped and pre-tinned these. So there's your audio. There's your shield. And then we have a red and a black. Now, in this microphone, the black is transmit, the red is receive. I never understood uh, a static wiring where the reds transmit. I always like to keep keep letters the same at the beginning of a word. You know, red receive kind of made sense, but yeah, not for a static. But that's another. <laughs> that's a different conversation. So let me get this pushed back a little bit. I'll try and get. So I have the meter right there. It is in an ohm meter position right now. So I'm going to attach one lead. So right now I have the switch on the bottom of this microphone in the relay position. And if I connect one lead to the shield and then pick either one, black or the red, you'll notice there's no continuity. I push the button on the mic. No continuity. I switch over to the red. No continuity. If I push the button, Still no continuity. Now if I connect between the red and the black, no continuity, I'll push the button, and you see we have continuity now. That's what that's meant to do. These are no longer tied to this shield, or the, the shield wire. So in relay switching, you'd have your audio, and that's just the shield for the audio line. That's all it does. 
and then you have another two that are just a switch that are used for transmit because pretty much all of your old radios, the old tube types especially, did not need a microphone plugged in to hear receive. They just needed to be a set of switch contacts that when you closed them, they would make, con you know, when you push the button, it would close those contacts, make continuity so it could switch the relay on. That's what these two wires do. So now if we switch this little switch to the electronic position, and we'll do the same test again. We'll start out, hook it up to shield, and one to the black wire, which is the transmit line in this. So you can see no continuity. If I push the button, we have continuity. So that's the transmit line, the black. Not pushing, pushing. And if we switch over to the red, that's the receive line. So you'll see when my hand, I'm not pushing the button, we have continuity. When I push the push to talk button, continuity goes away. So that's your receive line. And then if we try, like on the other one, if we go in between switch contacts, and I push the button, you can see it doesn't do anything. Pushing the button, not pushing the button, pushing the button, not pushing the button. So, you know, having them connected to red and black doesn't do anything in that position. So that's what that little switch does. And that's another reason I really like the turners. You don't have to rewire your microphone down there. You don't need a fifth wire out here to tie together like an A-static. That blue wire, you'd normally, for electronic switching, you have to tie the blue wire to the shield. The turners, you just flip the switch. That's all you need to do to disconnect the ground from that center contact on that switch. So there you go. I hope that cleared it up where you could actually see what does that mean at the cord end. You're flipping that button. What does that do out here? So I hope that, uh, you know, describes it a little bit more in detail so, you know, it can make sense for people.